This week in history, the world came together to say enough is enough. On December 10th, 1948, 75 years ago, the newly established United Nations put on paper a global roadmap for freedom and equality. Mm -hmm. The horrors of World War II and the Holocaust pushed world leaders to create a document establishing that all humans need to be free and they need to be equal. The document is called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And Boise is one of the few places in the world where this declaration is on display and appropriately, you can find it at the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights. Joe Paris explains why. The horrors of World War II shocked the world. Images and stories of unthinkable death and destruction caused the world to pause. In 1946, a document was drafted to address the topic of never again. In 1948, it was published as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All humans have inherent dignity, and that honoring that dignity is sort of the foundation of peace, justice, freedom. Christina Bruce Benyon is the executive director of the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights in Boise. The center's mission ties in perfectly with the UDHR. I think it was an extraordinary effort given how, um, how divided and, and literally out of massive conflict so many regions of the world were at that time coming out of World War II. The fact that so many countries came together, 48 countries at the time signed it, um, uh, is a pretty extraordinary effort, I think, and I think speaks a lot to how, how really terrible and destabilizing sort of the, the, the events of World War II and what we saw happen during that time. The city of Boise has a unique tie to the entire document itself. Part of the Idaho and Frank Human Rights Memorial, we are one of the few places that has the full text of the UDHR completely written out for the public to read. It's actually in these tablets behind us and has been a long-standing core part of the memorial. And so it's a really instructional space. It's a reflective opportunity to really think about. So yeah, we're proud to have it here. 75 years after it was published, this living document serves as an important reminder of protecting human rights around the world. Bruce Benyon highlights what sticks out to her. There was this collective faith in the fundamental nature of human rights and the fact that that is really that human rights and dignity and worth of the human person and in the equal rights of men and women to have determined and to promote social progress and better standards of life and larger freedom. So just again, connecting that idea that it really all flows from dignity. Words like respect and dignity are used commonly, but a deep understanding and education of what those truly mean takes it a step further. That's actually one of my favorite things is to, to go through this with a group of students um, and hear their responses and their reflections and, and even the acknowledgement that people came together to really think about what are fundamental and universal human rights. The UDHR really was the first international effort that went in, you know, that, that really took hold in the way that it has and, and that they've continued to build on it with additional, um, more enforceable type things over the decades. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is not a simple document. It's extensive and it serves a purpose, a roadmap for human rights around the globe. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt pushed that purpose as chairperson of the drafting committee of the UDHR. When you look at these different rights as they are laid out, they are often the ones that really start close to home and in our communities and in our workplaces and in our homes and in our schools. And so it's a good reminder that while these are big and universal, they are the things that really start close to home.